tick, tick, tick. It was strangely quiet in the employee lounge at Equestria Speedy Shipping Services. The only sounds were the ticking of the wall clock and the low, vibrating hum emanating from Watt, as was normal for him when he was actually sitting still. Glow and cal cloud cover had already been sent on assignment, and more worryingly, Ditsy hadn't shown up at all yet. Breeze glanced up once again at the clock. What in the question is Ditsy? he asked absently to Watt. She's been a little late before, but she should have been here over an hour ago. Maybe she's taking the day off, Watt suggested. Breeze frowned. Maybe, but I think she would have told me yesterday if she was planning on taking vacation today. Watt squinted, thinking hard. Maybe she got abducted by space ponies then. Bree stared blankly at his co-worker, who apparently was under the impression that space ponies were completely legitimate possibility. I doubt that, Watt. Watt shrugged. You never know. Bree shook his head. Pinkie Pie is rubbing off on you, dude. Watt burst in a huge grin. I won't deny that. Watt was about to say something else, but suddenly he stopped dead. His ear swiveled toward the door. Some ponies coming. Maybe it's Ditsy. Breeze listened as well. There was were indeed approaching hoofsteps. Very, very slow approaching hoofsteps. When the door finally swung open, Breeze found himself stifling a cry of shock. The approaching pony was Ditsy, but Breeze had never seen her like this before. The mare's head hung so low that the tip of her <clears throat> badly unkept mane dragged on the ground. She had clearly gotten absolutely no sleep that previous night. Her eyes were bloodshot and teary, and dark circles rimmed their undersides. But the thing that alarmed Breeze the most with the mare's eyes were the lack, were not the apparent lack of sleep or the evidence of extended crying. Rather, it was a lack of uncertain. It was a lack of a certain quality he had become used to seeing there. A sort of light that always graced Ditsy's expression had vanished from her eyes now. The disappearance of this indescribable but essential quality left the mare now looking hollow, almost lifeless, and that was a matter of major concern for the male Pegasus observing her. What was the first to speak? Breeze was not particularly happy with the yellow stallion chose to say. Yep, that's what I'd look like after a day I just got abducted by space ponies too. Breeze shot such a glare out Watt's direction that the earth pony actually cowered in fear as if he was being physically struck by the force of the gaze alone. Luckily, respite from the tense situation came for him a moment later. Kilowatt hour. Please report for my office to an foreign assignment. Thank you. Watt just nodded in the direction of his co-workers before bolting from the room so quickly that he left the Watt-shaped cloud of dust where he had originally been standing. Breeze ran across the room to Ditsy who looked like she was about to collapse. Ditsy, what's wrong? he asked. Are you sick? Or did something happen? One of Ditsy's dull eyes rolled slowly to face Breeze, feeling grateful <clears throat> feeling grateful that at least Breeze wanted to help. Of course, there was nothing he could do. Things didn't exactly go my way yesterday, Breeze. Breeze raised an eyebrow. What, you failed in another assignment? Is that what got you so down? No, I completed the assignment, Ditsy mumbled. It was what happened afterwards that got to me. In a dull monotone voice, the pathetic looking mare recounted the events of the previous night, both Raindrop's bad news and Dinky's rejection from the academy. She watched Breeze's, Breeze's expression grow gradually more shocked and outraged as she proceeded through the monologue. But I. How could they? Breeze sputtered. Ditsy shook her head. Simple. Clouds mi Cloudsdale, Mill, and Freight got hit with a debt, and they pushed it onto me. It makes sense, I guess. It wouldn't be good if Equestria's main mail service went out of business, and I did technically cause the damage. Don't say that, Breeze answered. That is ridiculous, and you know it. What difference does it make? Ditsy said. It's not like I can go against Counterlaw in my own case. If Cloudsdale, Mill, and Freight couldn't beat them, then why would I be able to? She sighed. Besides, I'm more upset that Dinky has to suffer with me. Does Dinky know about this yet? The male, peg the male Pegasus asked. Ditsy looked at her. She was already asleep when the news came last night. 
I'll tell her this evening, but she's going to be disappointed to learn that she won't be going to the academy. Can't you just get Dinky a magic tutor, Breeze asked. Maybe if she learns the basics and reapplies, then she'll get into the academy. I already thought of that, said Ditsy glumly, but Dinky needs to learn everything that she apparently should have been learning the first few years of her life. Even with a tutor, that would take ages, and Dinky would be <coughs> exceeding the maximum entry age for first years at the academy within a year. The staff claims that the advanced magical training isn't really effective if the unicorn is already too old by the time to start. If only I'd learn about the place sooner. Ditsy flopped to the floor and covered her face with her hooks, groaning. I've lived on very little money before, and I can do it again. I'll live quietly in debt for the rest of my life if I have to. But why? Why does Ditsy have to, why does Dinky have to get caught up with this as well? She's such a little angel. She doesn't deserve punishment like this. And now that her one way out of all of this has rejected her, there's nowhere she can turn. The mare's eyes brimmed with tears again. I can't protect her this time. Feeling defeated, Breeze stared down at the at his quietly sobbing friend. There must be something we can do, he said weakly. I don't think either of you should live in this debt. He paused. And forgive me for asking, but are you really not worried about yourself at all? I understand Dinky's important, but... Ditsy stopped crying long enough to glance up at Breeze. Judging by her expression, it was almost as if the question made no sense to her. Dinky will always be the most important to me, she whispered, because, well, it's a long story. A long story that I've never actually told many ponies before. Ditsy's lightness, lightless eyes met with Breeze's bright green ones, and at the moment, she made an important decision. I'd like to tell you this, that story, Breeze, if you don't mind. Breeze backed up defensively. I don't know, Ditsy. Is this the story? Is this story hard for you to talk about? I don't want you to make you feel more upset than you already are. Ditsy shook her head. No, I think it's time I shared this with some pony else. I've been keeping it for years. It'll make me feel a little better to share it with some pony I trust. And I do trust you, Breeze. Breeze nodded slowly. Alright, go ahead. Ditsy stood and gave a long, deep sigh. It all started nearly six years ago, back when my husband was still around, <clears throat> on the day Dinky was born. Date. Year of Luna's Banishment, 995. Location, Ponyville Urgent Care, Maternity Ward. A handsome brown unicorn stallion with a white mane trotted nervously around the empty tiled room. Surely it had to be almost over by now. The whole process seemed to be taking too long. Perhaps there had been some kind of complication? No, 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 the stallion shook his head to clear his thought. Don't think about these things. You know they would tell you if anything was wrong. But he couldn't quite shake the worry away. It was normal, he supposed. Any new father would probably be thinking the same things. Uh, he'd just have to wait it out. The minutes passed slowly in the nearly silent waiting room. The stallion jumped at the sight, <clears throat> at the slight sound of the door swinging open, admitting the chief of the hospital nurse, staff, Nurse Redheart, into the room. The nurse checked her clipboard. You're Mr. Dashing Do, right? She asked tentatively. The stallion nodded. How did he? Did everything go all right? Redheart smiled. Absolutely. The new baby had has been taken for its initial che checkup. And your wife is red. Why does that sound so hard to say? Let me try that again. Red Heart smiled. Absolutely. The new baby has been taken for its original checkup. And your wife is resting in the next room. Dashing Do breathed, breathed a sigh of relief. May I see her? Of course, said the nurse. She She's just through here. Follow me. A few moments later, the stallion peered into the room where the Pegasus he loved was lying, partially covered by a blanket. Ditsy looked a bit shaken, but smiled and waved feebly as her husband entered. The baby's a girl, she said once the stallion stood at her side. She's really an adorable little filly, and she's a unicorn, dashing grinned. Just like her old man, huh? She looks more like me, though, Ditsy teased. She's got my mane and my eyes. Again, the stallion grinned and thought of the filly, who must look a bit like Ditsy in miniature. He was glad the filly had inherited her mother's eye color. Ditsy had such beautiful eyes. Their lovely shine was what had first caught his attention when the pair first had met. 
it would be such a shame for any if anything were ever to ruin that beautiful gaze. Go on, did he say quietly. Go out and see her. Are you okay in here without me? Dashing asked. Didsy glanced around. Dashing, we're surrounded by doctors and nurses. I think they've got it covered. Dashing nodded and waved goodbye to his favorite mare before proceeding next door to peer through the glass at the sleeping newborns. He recognized their feeling immediately. There in the corner slept a tiny purplish gray unicorn, curled in a pink woolen blanket and was sleeping soundly. The stallion's heart melted at the sight of the innocent newborn. Twice. The sound of nearby hoofsteps shook him from his dreamlike state. He turned to see an orange earth filly, probably about six or seven years old, approaching when she reached the window. She stood up, placing her foreheads on the glass so she could peer inside more easily. Do you have a new brother or sister in there? Dashing asked. The filly nodded, smiling broadly. I reckon I do, mister, she asked. That little yellow colored one in the front. Ma says we're naming her Apple Bloom. The filly looked around at the other newborns before turning to Dashing again. What about you? Are you some pony's paw now? It was Dashing's turn to smile proudly. Yes, look in the corner there. It's the, yellow, the little unicorn with the yellow mane. Aw, the filly cooed. She's plum adorable, she is. But she sure is a little dinky thing. She's tiny even for a newborn. The earth pony turned back to Dashing. What are y'all gonna name her? Dashing blinked in surprise. I don't know. We haven't discussed it yet. The filly nodded. Well, all right. Good luck with your new filly, mister. The stallion nodded. Thank you. Good luck with your new sister. The orange filly giggled before trotting away. Dashing quickly returned to the room where Ditsy was still resting to ask her inevitable question. Ditsy, what are we going to name her? He asked. I really hadn't thought about that. Ditsy tapped her hoof against her chin and thought. Gee, I don't know. Do you have any suggestions? Not yet, Dashing admitted. All I noticed about her is that she's just a little smaller than normal, but I'm sure she'll catch up to every pony else pretty quickly. The filly out there in the hallway called her a dinky little thing. Ditsy's eyes lit up. That's so cute. It gives me an idea. What if we name her Dinky? 